so uh, this is a case of 71 year old woman uh, is presenting with worsening back pain and lower extremity weakness and she is four months status post evacuation of the lumbar intradural hematoma after the traumatic lumbar puncture and uh, these are the images provided now this is uh, the t2 weighted mri and it is showing an abnormal fecal sac here the nerve roots of the cauda equina are positioned posteriorly and they are adherent and adherent to the posterior dura the low signal bands here they represent adhesions which are coursing through the thecal sac and they create the intradural cysts okay these are the low signal bands and they are actually the adhesions which are coursing through the thecal sac and they're creating the intradural cysts so this is a case of uh, arachnoiditis and uh, in the differentials you can put uh, intradural mass that is mixopapillary ependymoma metastasis spinal stenosis with apparent nerve root clumping so next are uh, ENT cases. Now, let's see, this 58-year-old patient uh, presenting with acute breathing difficulty. And these are the images. Now, as you can see that uh, there is a lesion in the right paraglottic space here uh, that contains a fluid fluid level okay so this is the lesion which contains the fluid fluid level and uh, the laryngeal airway is actually displaced to the left here the laryngeal airway is displaced to the left and it is narrowed all of it is the lesion including this this is the lesion and this is the laryngeal airway and this lesion has a fluid fluid level and uh, it is you know, it is just uh, displacing the airway to the left and narrowing it as well. So this is a case of infected laryngocele, that is biolaryngocele. And uh, in the differentials, you can include saccule, that is ventricular appendix, or thyroglossal duct cyst, or cystic tumor like squamous cell carcinoma. So next is uh, a patient presenting with uh, three days of pain, redness, and slight swelling in the right eye. And uh, these are the images that are provided. Okay. So as you can see that there is enlargement and thickening of the superior oblique uh, muscle, including its tendon here. You can see including its tendon and uh, here its tendon is excluded it is including its tendon here uh, the superior rectus muscle as well okay and uh, the medial rectus muscle on the right side as well so there is enlargement and thickening of the superior oblique muscle uh, the this is the superior oblique muscle, the superior rectus muscle, and the medial rectus muscle. There is no ethmoid or uh, right maxillary sinus disease here, and uh, there is no orbital abscess or fluid collection. So this is the typical imaging picture of idiopathic inflammatory orbital disease called orbital pseudotumor. And uh, in the differentials, I mean, you can include this uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy, or uh, graves of thelmopathy and uh, orbital infection and lymphoproliferative disorders like lymphoma and other inflammatory disorders like Wegener's granulomatosis or sarcoidosis. Next is a 69 year old man presenting with severe blurred vision after blunt facial trauma and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see uh, here that uh, this is the axial CT scan and this is the T2 weighted MRI and it is showing the posterior dislocation of the left ocular lens okay here as well posteriorly dislocated left ocular lens so this is quite a specific finding I mean 
you shouldn't be putting any more differentials here but okay for the sake of exam purposes you can say traumatic lens dislocation or connective tissue disorders such as Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, homocystinuria and hyperlysinuria and hereditary ectopia lentis. So these are the differentials. Okay, next case, 64-year-old man with diplopia and headaches. And uh, these are the images here. Now, as you can see that there is an expansile lesion here. This is the expansile lesion, expansile lesion in the right petrous apex. And there is a thinning and remodeling of the bone uh, with a sharp zone of transition and sclerotic margins and on MRI the lesion shows a fairly homogeneous hyper intense signal on T1 this is the T1 weighted sequence and this hyper intense signal uh, homogeneously hyper intense on T1 and uh, it is homogeneously hyper intense and uh, there is no enhancement in this lesion on post contrast sequence so this uh, right maxillary sinus is also opacified here okay you can also note this finding as well so this is incidental finding uh, opacified right maxillary sinus so this lesion our focus is on this lesion this is cholesterol granuloma this is a typical imaging picture of cholesterol granuloma, so hyperintense on T1, consistent with fat. So this is cholesterol granuloma. In the differentials, of course, you can put a congenital cholestatoma, trapped proteinaceous fluid in petrosaire cell, mucosyl of petrosaire cell, metastasis, and multiple myeloma. Next is a 45-year-old presenting with facial swelling, pain, and fever, and these are the images that are provided. So let's start with them. There is a well-defined here rim enhancing low attenuation collection in the left submandibular space. And uh, also there are secondary inflammatory changes here, uh, including stranding in the adjacent fat. And uh, also uh, there is a thickening of the, here you can see that there is a thickening of the platysma muscle okay this is the platysma muscle which is thickened this is the fat stranding okay also uh, you can see here that uh, there is a lucency surrounding the this is the lucency surrounding the roots of the second left mandibular molar okay with breakthrough of the medial cortex okay breakthrough of the medial cortex here here it is breaking through breakthrough of the medial cortex is shown here also note that uh, this area uh, the mylohyoid on the coronal image it uh, separates the uh, sublingual and uh, submandibular spaces and the site of cortical breakthrough lies below the insertion of this muscle on the mandible okay here this is the site of cortical breakthrough and it lies below the insertion of this muscle so this is a case of submandibular abscess okay this is a case of submandibular abscess and in the differentials, you can include infected ranula, lymphangioma, and submandibular gland tumor. Next is 20-year-old man presenting with hearing loss after a motor vehicle accident. And uh, these are the images. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, that uh, there is a transverse fracture. Okay of the right temporal bone this is the transverse fracture this is the transverse fracture and uh, the fracture is uh, extending through the internal auditory canal and otic capsule and it is coursing through the basal turn of the cochlea okay here 
it's coursing through the basal turn of the cochlea. This is the fracture. And uh, the patient developed a CSF leak and subsequent CT cisternography uh, shows the high density contrast extending from the uh, internal auditory canal into the cochlea and middle ear here. Okay, this is the contrast which is extending uh, into the inter internal auditory canal and middle ear. So this is a case of temporal bone fracture, transverse fracture, transverse fracture of the temporal bone. This is the transverse fracture of the temporal bone and uh, longitudinal temporal bone fracture can be included in the differential. Now this is a 54 year old Chinese man uh, presenting with nasal obstruction and ear pain and uh, these are the images provided. Now, as you can see that there is a bulky hair, abnormal nasopharyngeal tissue crossing the midline, okay, and it is uh, hyper intense to the muscles on T2 weighted MRI, and uh, here it is hyper intense on uh, T1 weighted images, and it enhances as well. It is enhancing, you know, here you can see is enhancing. So there is a discrete round mass in the right retropharynx, and uh, it is uh, in the right retropharynx. Is this is the mass? This is that round mass, and it is consistent with the enlarged uh, node of runware. And uh, this is the PET study, and it shows the avid FTG chlorodeoxyglucose uptake in this lesion. So this is a typical case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma and in the differentials you can include lymphoma and uh, other skull based malignancies can also produce a similar appearance. This is a case of a 53 year old woman uh, with bilateral mixed hearing loss and these are the images. As you can see that there is a focal area of uh, demineralization here here, focal area of demineralization which is immediately anterior to the oval window and uh, bilaterally okay and uh, it is consistent with an autosclerotic plaque okay so it is consistent with an autosclerotic plaque and uh, this is the magnified view and in particular, it is showing the focal nature here of this uh, region of bone demineralization. So this is a case of fenestral autosclerosis and in the differentials, you can include focal, uh, very rarely focal demineralization due to other processes like sarcoid or syphilis or tympanous sclerosis could have a similar appearance. Next is 49 year old man uh, presenting with uh, ear pain and headache and uh, these are the images. Now as you can see that uh, here there is uh, opacification of the left middle ear and mastoid. Also uh, there is uh, destruction of the bony septations here in the mastoid and on coronal images here are the this is the coronal image and there's erosion of the tegment tympani okay so on the coronal image uh, there is uh, here as you can see in the coronal image there is uh, here the tegment tympani has been eroded so this is the erosion of the tegment tympani here and uh, additional mri images here the additional MRI images uh, demonstrate a rim enhancing collection. This is the rim enhancing collection in the left temporal lobe with surrounding edema. And uh, there is restricted diffusion as well within this collection. And the mucosa in the left middle ear and mastoid is enhancing. The mucosa in the left middle ear and mastoid is enhancing. So 
this is a case of uh, coalescent mastoiditis okay this is a typical this is a case of coalescent mastoiditis and in the differentials you can include simple automastoiditis